Recently, for the Daily Cancellation, we spent some time dumping on boomers after Jeff Foxworthy tried to blame the younger generations for the existence of participation trophies. And as I pointed out, the boomers label millennials the participation trophy generation while neglecting to mention that they, the boomers, are the ones who invented participation trophies and gave them out. In fact, the boomers invented almost all of the terrible things that are ripping our society apart. Things like veganism, the internet, the sexual revolution. I don't know if boomers actually invented veganism, but I'm blaming them for it anyway. But today we're going we're gonna to take the always enjoyable generational blame game and move it over to the younger set this time, Gen Z and millennials, my generation, technically. Though from a spiritual and emotional perspective, I'm really more of a disgruntled 85-year-old hermit who lives in a hollowed out tree in the woods or something. I don't really identify with my generation. And this Yahoo News article reminds me why. Here's the headline. Gen Z and millennials are disrupting the workplace as they're choosing to be jobless rather than work for a company they don't like. Now, there are different ways to be a disruptor. You could be the Elon Musk type of disruptor, doing new and bold things, challenging the powerful institutions, innovating. Or you could be the kind of disruptor who disrupts by standing off to the side like a useless lump and scratching your ass while everyone else gets the work done. Sadly, many in my peer group and younger have chosen the latter course. So the article says, quote, Gen Z and millennials are unique when it comes to demanding a work-life balance. They don't just want flexible work hours and environments. They want to work for companies that align with their own personal beliefs and values. And almost half of Gen Z and millennials would rather be unemployed than unhappy in a job, according to a new study. The career goals of Gen Z and millennials are changing power dynamics in the workplace. Almost two in four members of younger generations would prefer being unemployed than work in a job they don't like, according to the study. Most of the young people surveyed said they preferred to work at companies that shared their personal values. Two in five Gen Zers and millennials said they... They would take a lower paying salary if it meant that they were purposefully contributing to society. Diversity and inclusion were also important to the survey respondents. 49% of Gen Z and 46% of millennials said that they wouldn't work for a company that didn't make diversity a priority. A uh, priority of Gen Z and millennials is their own happiness. In fact, 56% of Gen Z and 55% of millennials said they would quit a job if it interfered with their personal lives. Now, there's obviously nothing wrong with wanting to work for a company that represents your values. I mean, in principle, that's a very good thing. The problem is in the perverse and stupid value system that so many of these people want companies to align with, as evidenced by their insistence on diversity and inclusion. Um, aside from value alignment, we're also told that millennials and Gen Z demand a better work-life balance, and that they would rather be unemployed than unhappy at their jobs. And this, this is where the real problems arise, I think. First of all, if you're a young person today, or even an old person, the balance you should be worried about is not work life, but screen life. We're told that young people don't want to work, don't want work to interfere with their personal lives, but almost every waking hour of their personal lives are wasted staring at screens anyway. I could have more respect for the desire for work life balance if you were going to home to be, you know, with your spouse and children, or you were um, uh, trying to leave yourself time to engage in a productive hobby like woodworking or gardening or something. But the fact is that for many of these people, the lives they're trying to protect from workplace intrusion are hardly lives at all. There's something quite morbidly ironic about a man screaming that there's more to his life than being a wage slave, only to discover that the only thing he wants to do is scroll through TikTok and binge Netflix. Second, even leaving that issue to the side, the more fundamental problem with the work-life balance idea is that work and life are not two separate things. Life is work. It's a symptom of our privilege and entitlement in the modern industrialized West that we can even consider life and work as two distinct categories. Talk to anybody outside of that bubble about their work-life balance, and they'll have no idea what you're even talking about. Because life requires work. Every life is sustained by work. So when the self-righteous millennial or Gen Zer turns up his nose and says, I'd rather be unemployed than unhappy working. The question is then, who will be doing the work to sustain his existence. Whether you're happy or not, the fact of life is that your life requires work. And if you refuse to do it, somebody else has to. So who's that going to be? Your parents? Johnny taxpayer next door? Maybe a combination? Whoever it is, if you are not, you are not living a, a life free of the work requirement, nobody can. You are rather living a life where that requirement has been offloaded to somebody else. You've made someone else your slave, in effect. You don't want to be a wage slave, so someone else is going to be your slave. 
There's nothing, nothing noble about that. It's entitled. It's selfish. In fact, it's evil. The refusal to participate in the difficult aspects of your own life is evil. It's a shameful thing. Third point. We hear that um, all of these younger people are prioritizing their happiness, focusing on their happiness, giving up work for the sake of happiness, pursuing happiness, thinking about their happiness, talking about happiness, obsessing over their happiness. And yet, shockingly, so few of them are actually happy. There have never been people who, who, who talk so much about happiness and yet feel it so, so little. Isn't that interesting? Millennials and Gen Z are, are at once the, the most focused on their happiness and, and yet also the least happy. Perhaps there's a lesson there which we might consider finally learning at some point. And the lesson is that happiness cannot be conjured out of the ether like a magical spell. You can't will yourself into it. You can't convince yourself to be it. Happiness is a byproduct of a well-ordered, well-situated, grounded, virtuous, productive life. That's the only way to achieve sustained happiness. You can find pleasure outside of that. You can you know, go to a back alley somewhere, buy some black tar heroin and find some pleasure that way, I guess. You could derive pleasure from an extra large fast food value meal or a $3 hooker. But you won't find happiness any of those places. And you won't find it in a directionless life free of work, free of challenge. Spend staring at screens while somebody else provides for all of your many needs. As it turns out, life and work cannot be severed, and neither can happiness and work. It takes work to be happy. You have to do difficult things. You have to exert yourself. You have to give yourself over to some cause beyond yourself. Happiness comes then as a side effect, often when you least expect it. And always when you aren't thinking about it. You simply fulfill your responsibilities, you live your life, you do your work, and one day you look up and you say, wow, look at that, I'm I'm happy. That's how happiness works. You only find it when you stop looking for it. This is one of the fundamental facts of life. And it's something that both the Gen Z and millennial generations would do well to learn. Until then, they are, of course, canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.